system, when the original file systems were created, when the original FAT file systems were created, file names had this, what they call uh, 8.3 uh, format, file names, 8.3 file names. And an 8.3 file name, you could have eight characters, a period, and then three more characters. And that was the extent of your file name. And as most of you probably know, you can create a file today that's called um, hello, this is my file, dot, dot, whatever, right? And you could have spaces. The 8.3 file names could not have spaces. They could have underscore characters, stuff like that. Okay, so Fuberinos, we're not going to be able to access these files. Well, we can access them, but we won't see this name. What happens is, uh, the way this got implemented is Microsoft actually, they store this information someplace else, and in, in the, the fat, um, file table, what they'll store is something like, hello, uh, underscore, one, two, three, four, five, six, tilde one, dot, voc. And then somewhere else, they'll store this, and the file allocation table will will know this name and it knows this name. So if you create a really long file uh, name on an SD card and then get a listing on the Fuberino, it's going to get truncated. It's going to look like this. And um, the, the reason this was done this way was when they, when they went from this 8.3, which is uh, Microsoft DOS, uh, Windows 3.1, um, they, they, uh, they call these long file names. So these are 8.3 file names, and these are called long file names. Okay, so when they when they when they went to long file names, Microsoft knew that um, uh, there was all these computers out there that had these 8.3 file names, and uh, Windows 95 was going to come out, and people were going to start creating these. And they were going to need to be able to send it and give those files to people that had older Windows 3.1 computers. And so they made it so that they, they both they worked in parallel. Um, so, and it stuck around. And the nice thing about that is it allows us to use uh, 8.3 file names on our Kubernetes. So um, a logical question might be, why not just implement long file names on a Kubernetes? so that we can utilize long file names? Uh, and that's a great question. Uh, but the answer is, um, long file names are patented by Microsoft. And um, I think the patent ran out this year, or last year. And so we might be seeing some of this soon. There, there's actually like five patents associated with this, and I think the first patent just ran out. Um, and it's the critical one. That from, from, what, from my non-legal standpoint, but though I'm sure I, I do not employ a lawyer, uh, and Microsoft probably employs lots of them, so they'll probably figure out ways to, to irk this patent out a little longer. And as far as I know of, only a, a couple of companies have ever been sued over this. And one of them, I don't know if you guys remember TomTom Tom, GPS? So TomToms use long file names, but they used a, a Linux type operating system, and Microsoft sued them, because they would you were using long file names. So, 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 and, and I have at the top of this lab my fiduciary responsibility, which is a nice legal term, is to tell you that some of this stuff has Microsoft patents. Um, and there, there's other patents associated with SD cards that are, are from Microsoft as well. Uh, the thing about it is, though, if you said, if you called up Microsoft and said, hey, I'm going to make this thing, and I want to use long file names, and I, you know, I think I'm going to sell ten. Right? Microsoft will hang up on you. Right? It's not even worth their time. Right? So you could use long file names, um, and um, Microsoft is is not going to sue you because, frankly, you have no money. Why are they going to spend uh, three hundred dollars an hour on their lawyer to sue someone who doesn't have any money? So, so you could. I mean, there's a lot that can be done. Uh, these patents, and you can wait for patents to expire and things like that. So I use SD. So an interesting thing, right, when I, when I started uh, 
doing the, the embedded development, um, we were using uh, 8-bit microprocessors that usually, typically, it, if we were really trick, we could get like 128K of program space, right? Or 256K. Right? 256K um, K bytes program space. That program space included like all our data and any data we wanted to utilize in the program. And this was, and we were doing tricks to, to get this out because the 8 bit processors could usually only address 64K of memory. So we could, we would do tricks to like swap out the memory that we could access. So there was really limited applications. These Fuberino SDs, they use this, uh, we got 80 megahertz PIC, PIC32, which has typical devices have 128K of RAM, uh, 512K program space, but if you add the SD card on it, the smallest, cheapest SD card I could find, these are like five bucks a piece, have four gigabytes of data, four gigabytes, right? And then I just, I bought some um, SD cards, I bought a, a 64 gig SD card tonight for $49, something, right? So for, 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 a few dollars, you could add gigabytes of memory, right? And you could store in 10 gigabytes, you could store an hour of video, or uh, you could store tons of songs, create MP3 players, or music players, or things like that. So by adding the SD card, uh, it, it really expands what you could store, um, or, or read and utilize in your device. Store programs in there too? Yeah. Um, Did you put it into the regular 